welcome to Viking Flavours of the World. Now, with New Year's just around the corner, I wanted to bring you a little inspiration from our Ballynock and Cookery School here in Ireland. And it's all about entertaining. I want to show you how to make a delicious baked Irish brie with hazelnuts, honey and cranberries. And let's make some rosemary seed crackers to go with that. Now, you can't have a New Year's party without a little cocktail. So I'm going to show you how to make a cranberry spritz. But before I get into the cocktails, we need to get actual cooking. Let's go make our brie. For festive entertaining, and in particular for New Year, it's really nice to have something that everybody can share. So this baked Irish brie is delicious for it. Here's my Coolini brie, it's a great Irish brand, and it's always important, if you can, to buy local, support small local farmers. But the amazing thing about Irish cheese, butter, cream, all our cattle are grass-fed. So the animals are outside all year round, more or less. So you've got the most beautiful grass-fed butters, cheeses, yogurts, etc. There's nothing quite like it. Look at this. This is lovely. And there's already a little bit of flavour infused in there because this one has already got a bit of black pepper and chilli added in. So it says. So you can buy flavoured brie as well. So we put this aside. This is the easiest thing to do in the world. You have your oven already on. And what you're going to do is you're going to take your brie and you literally just score it. Now, I kind of go diagonally like this and then this way. And you see what happens in the baking process is that the brie, the actual cheese just comes up through the rind and it melts and it makes it so good for dipping. And then of course you want crackers and croutons and veggies and all sorts to serve around it. But how do we dress this up? So we're going to go with some chopped hazelnuts. Because if you put the dressing on now, when this bakes, all of this will melt into the brie. Now, I think cranberries, dried cranberries work really well with cheese. So be nice and generous. And then I have a little bit of thyme. So we're just going to just put some thyme over it because herbs and cheese, another marriage made in heaven. And if you wanted to, you could put a little bit of rosemary as well. Not too much, because it's stronger than you think. And then some lovely local honey. So all the herbs are from our herb garden here in Ballynockin. Cheese is local, the honey is local. And it's about celebrating great local ingredients as we travel the world with Viking. Now, this goes onto your oven tray and into the oven and we let that bake and melt down and I can focus on getting my rosemary seed crackers made. Now I'm crackers for a good cracker. I've always wanted to say that, but I want to show you how to make rosemary seed crackers. And again, beautiful rosemary straight from a herb garden, still flourishing right here in the depths of winter in Wicklow, Ireland. So, to make crackers, it's really easy to do. So you can make your own and have them with any cheese, any time, or even with some soup. And you start with your flour here, and then we're gonna cut the butter in. So there's our butter, we just pop that in, and we get ourselves a little knife. And what I always do is, I turn the butter in the flour, like that, and then cut it up into little pieces, because then it's already a little bit dry, and it's much easier to cut up. Look at that, that's so nice. The beautiful thing about making your own crackers, you can adjust any flavouring you want. I'm going with a little bit of paprika, I'm putting seeds in, rosemary, um, some little almonds are going in. You can change the flavours according to what you would like. But when you make your own, you know what's in them as well, which is a big bonus. So let's give these a little mix together and just cut that butter in. So just using your fingertips and working deftly, just push the butter into the flour. There's something quite therapeutic about baking, I have to say. I do like no matter what it is, cakes, scones, anything like that. I just love getting my hands in and creating something flavorful and tasty. And I'm looking forward to hopefully seeing you guys in the new year. Come down and see me in Ballynock and Cookery School, of course. You're very welcome to come if you're on your Viking cruise and you're coming into Dublin. I'm one of your shore excursions. So you can learn an awful lot more about great Irish baking. This is just a little taster for you. So you're cutting the butter in. You want that mix to look like ground almonds. 
So I'll give it a nice mix through. So I'm happy with that now. See that texture? Very nice. Just gonna make sure I don't have any large lumps of butter stuck in there. Perfect. Now, we're going in with our paprika. So in that goes. And our ground almonds. And our seeds. Okay. So here's our rosemary from the garden. That's fabulous. So just hold it at the top and pull it down and you'll get your lovely rosemary leaves. But the thing is, they're just that little bit too clunky to go into our crackers. So we need to chop it up a bit more finely. If I'm not using rosemary, I'll probably use some thyme here or some dried oregano either or oregano, depending on where you live in the world. So bunch it all together and get the back of the knife and just chop up like that. Scrape it all together and start chopping. Try to keep it on your board. There's one that's escaped. Now, that is perfect. So, we get our bowl back and we take up all our lovely rosemary. I really wish you could smell this. There's nothing quite like using fresh herbs straight from the garden. So give this a lovely mix. Lovely, very happy with that. Now we need to bring that together into a dough. So to do that, we have some water. And this is where you need to be careful. You don't want to overwater this. So just a little drop of water and give it a little mix around and it'll start to clump a bit. And another little drop, give it a little mix. Still not, it's still gonna to be too crumbly, so another little drop. Because the reason I'm saying to you put a little drop of water in bit by bit is, it really will depend on the flour that you're using yourself. Some flours take in that little bit more water than others. But let's have a look and see. Squeeze it together. If it's dough-like, great, but I think that's still a tad crumbly for me. So I'm just gonna break it up. I am so close to having the perfect dough. Another little drop. Give it another little stir around and I think we should be okay. Let's have a look now. Squeeze it together, yes. So a good indication, if your dough is very crumbly, just break it up again and put in another little bit of water. But what you don't want is your dough to be too dry because it's gonna be very difficult to roll out. And if it's too wet, it's gonna be equally difficult to roll out. So you just want it to come together into a nice, reasonably firm dough. And the trick now is, is to get this into parchment paper and into the fridge and you let that rest. And not only does the gluten in the flour relax, making it easier to roll out, but also your butter hardens a little bit, which helps hold the shape while you're rolling it out. And we roll this into thin crackers, which we'll do fairly shortly. We'll give this at least 30 minutes in the fridge though. I'm off to have a cup of tea. I'll see you in 30 minutes. So here's our cracker dough. It has rested and so have I. So it's time now to roll it out. And for that, you definitely need flour because it can be a little tacky after it's been sitting in the parchment paper. So get yourself some flour out onto your workstation, onto the dough and Brush off the excess, and away we go. Now, I like to flour the rolling pin as well. And just keep giving a little quarter turn, like this, you see? It's very therapeutic, isn't it? Now, if you're worried about it sticking to the counter, just make sure you've always a little bit of flour underneath it. And if you have a gadget like this, these are called palette knives and they're lovely and skinny and they're great for just getting in underneath like that to help. It's all about having the right equipment and the knowledge. Now, I can feel that sticking a little bit to the rolling pin. So what I'm gonna do is just flour my rolling pin because I don't want a really floury dough. See how resting it makes it so much easier to roll out. 
and you can get it nice and thin. Oh, catching a little bit there. So, more flour on a rolling pin. This is the exact same way that I roll out a pie crust. Now, let's just see that it moves. The counter. Oh, it's catching a little bit. There we go. And now, it wouldn't be New Year without making star crackers. So you get your star cutter, dip it in a little bit of the flour and start cutting out. And there's our first star. Ah, look. And so on and so on. And the oven's already preheated for these. These will bake nice and swiftly. Okay, there's all our stars. Now, you can take your leftovers, which we have plenty of, shape it together again, and you can roll out more stars, or you can cut little strips and do twists of your dough. So, I'm gonna put that aside because I wanna bake these now, and I'll keep that for later and make a few twists later with it. And here's my tray ready for the oven. And we'll get our stars on. Just separate them out a little bit on your tray. Now they go into the oven to bake and pretty soon we'll be having our appetizer. And here are our delicious rosemary seed crackers in star shape, of course. It is the new year. Now, in the oven here, I've kept my brie nice and warm. Look at this. I mean, I just, I adore all of this. So we can now put the brie straight onto our presentation board. There it goes. Now we want to present this, and I think red apple always works very nicely. So you can only do the red apple on the last minute, of course, but the brie also needs to be warm. So just remember that when you're serving it. So cut your apple in half, in half again. I've just got a little mini apple because I don't want the size to overpower the board. Get your knife in underneath and just flip out the core there like that. So you can just get in underneath the core. That's surplus to requirements. So the texture of the apple will be lovely in this, but also the color of the apple is gonna be so nice. Okay, there's our apple. Now all we need to do is present this. So, I always think grapes look very nice. So you gotta think people eat with their eyes, don't they? And this is all about, you know, your entertaining. And whilst we're making this for New Year, of course, you know, this is valid for any time of the year. Some nice fresh rosemary from the garden. There we go. And now we have our gorgeous star crackers and they've cooled a little bit. So we can just layer those up like this. you want to get ahead of course you can make those crackers the day before as well I mean it's beginning to build up beautifully isn't it See, it's worth shaping them into stars they look so pretty I have some dried cranberries as well and I just thought I'd scatter some of them kind of up here like this just for a nice bit of color just to marry the story together People can always add them to the cheese as they want. And then a few more of the hazelnuts. That's lovely. And then we have our apple. So we can just go with our apple like this on the edge. And the same on this edge. That's lovely. And a little bit of apple just here for color as well. Okay, put that aside. Now I have another extra bit of honey here. And it's always nice, just one final little drizzle. 
And there you have it. This is my baked Irish brie with my rosemary seed crackers. I think this won't last long at your festive event because your guests are gonna love you for it. But you need a cocktail to serve with it. Let's make our cranberry spritz. Our cocktail is a delicious cranberry spritz. And to be honest, it's perfect for this time of the year. Your key ingredients are Prosecco. This is a cranberry syrup. You can use any syrup you want. Just change the name of the cocktail. Vodka. And then I've got some ice and some garnishing. It's a really simple little cocktail to make. Now, first thing I want to show you is how to decorate your glass. You want your glass to kind of look like that. So all you've got to do is you get a little bit of lemon and you just simply rub the lemon over the edge like that. And then you have a plate of sugar and you dip the rim of the glass gently in the sugar like that. And you just leave that to dry. And that's how you decorate your glass. So we need to make the cocktail before my ice melts. I have these beautiful ice cubes here. They're made in the shape of roses and there's rosemary in them. So they're rosemary rose shaped little ice cubes. Let's start with our cranberry syrup. So we get this in. Have a little smell of this. Oh, so gorgeous. Right, get a nice bit of cranberry syrup. That's gonna add a bit of sweetness in here. So in that goes. Okay, we'll try and get this as even as I can. Okay, and now our vodka goes in. I would say to taste, but there is a measurement for it. I mean, you don't want everybody keeling over at the party too early. So pop that in. Now, this doesn't get much easier. Now we get our ice in. Give it all a little stir. pretty already. Now I have the Prosecco. So when we go with the Prosecco and top it up. So I think you can see by this now this is a nice pretty cocktail perfect for this time of the year. And then I have my rosemary sprigs so get those in. If you wanted to, you could add mint in as well. I think I'm fairly full here now. And I'm just gonna put in a little bit of lime. Because the lime will cut through the cranberry syrup really nicely. And here's our cranberry spritz. And as we say here in Ireland, slauncha, which means to your health. Now let me tell you about what we prepared here. This is our delicious baked Irish brie with some hazelnuts, cranberries, honey and herbs on it. And beside it here we have those delicious rosemary seed crackers. And of course, as we were saying, our cranberry spritz. Now if you like these recipes, keep tuning in to us here on Viking TV. And I hope to welcome you to Ballynock and Cookery School for one of your shore excursions when you come to Dublin with Viking Cruises in the summer of next year. So come and see us, make sure you sign up. Happy New Year to you all.